welcome back to the next episode of our chocolate series. Today is a nice simple one. We're not going to do any comparisons or anything. What we're going to do is we're make, going to make a Valrona cocoa base. No added chocolate. We're going to up the dextrose a little bit, uh, drop the sucrose or normal table sugar down a bit, and just see what the result is. See how this compares to some of the others. So as normal, the recipe is down in the description. And we're on this journey to try and find what, obviously it's selective because it's me making it and it's my opinion, um, what I consider the best chocolate ice cream. This is going to probably be a fairly long journey. We've compared some cocoa powders. We've looked at some of the other ingredients. We've talked about how the addition of physical chocolate in your recipes can affect your ice cream. And I recently bought the Guitard's Coco Rouge, that actually makes a really nice chocolate ice cream. It's not quite as strong as Valrona, but it's got a re it gives you that same kind of chewy fudginess to it. It's got a really nice smooth taste. So I may well use that again in the near future. We might have to do a you know like a showdown towards the end of this series, but um. Let's just get stuck in and make this one. You know how this goes by now. You put all your ingredients in a pan, especially with cocoa. Just dissolve the sugars, warm your base up, add your cocoa powder in and let it bloom for, you know, five or six minutes. Now in this recipe, I've added one thing and that is a commercial grade stabilizer which has emulsifiers in it. That's to aid the emulsion of the base. That's to try and get the fats of the cocoa powder dissipated nicely. If you don't have that, you can use egg yolks if you wish, but otherwise, when your base is warmed up to temperature, take it off the hob, put it in a container, add your cream, and then put it back in the fridge. Again, as normal, it needs to cool right down to the temperature of your fridge, and it's gonna take at least four hours. Once that's ready, take it out of the fridge, give it a nice mix, make sure that it's all well incorporated again and put it in your machine to churn. As there's no add-ins or any fancy ingredients here, just load your tub up and then put it in a freezer for a few hours. If you really want to do some add-ins with what was left in this churn, I put in some hard fudge and then a liquid chocolate fudge as well just to See how that turned out. You know what, why not? Chocolate double fudge. Thank you very much. No fancy tubs. My wife's out with our daughter for the day, but this is just plain chocolate ice cream. So I don't know what she'd do a tub for this anyway. Let's get some dished up and see how this one turns out. So, Valrona, it's a very dark cocoa powder. It's... it's uh, I'll tell you what. I mean, it's so dark, you can barely see it in there. It's got a really rich, strong, almost overpowering chocolate smell to it. But, you know, it's one of the biggest well-known brands for chocolate products out there. Loads of professional chefs, bakers, etc. all use Varona. I mean, and, and guitars as well. But to be fair, is there that much of a difference that you can tell between a cheap cocoa powder, that Urca cocoa powder that we've used, that we've used before? I'll link to the video where we went through that. It makes a really good chocolate ice cream. It's not expensive. You can't buy it everywhere. You have to buy it from a supplier. But I think that one kilo bag worked out as something like six pounds for me, which is what I don't know, eight dollars, something like that. So let's see what the result is here. Fudgy straight away, you can tell just by putting a spoon through it. Valrona does something special, and I don't know why. 
because when you look at the ingredients, it's cocoa powder, acidity regulators, potassium carbonate. It's got to be the combination or or one of those second two that that makes a, such a nice chocolate ice cream. It's an absolute shame. It's if not the most, one of the most expensive cocoa powders on the market. Now, considering this is probably two or three or four times the price of any of the other ones we've looked at in this series, do I think it's worth it? I do. I do think it's worth it. Is it worth the addition to Guitards? Guitards is probably 25% cheaper than this. Now, there's a competition, there's a balance. Let me get that cocoa powder. It's remembering to use one of these things, you know, when you've got a, a, a young kid. God, these things, I keep forgetting, and then they can't get into the cupboards, and anyway, here we go. Guitards. This is, this is, this is a fight right here. There, Guitard's powder is lighter in colour than Varona. They both produce the fudgy finish. They both have a very strong flavour of chocolate. Colour-wise, this comes out just a little different to this. It's a little redder. You know, the recipe is, is great. It, if you follow the channel a while, you see that I use dextrose a fair bit in the recipes. Dextrose, you know, without going too much into it, it changes the freezing point of your ice cream. So it doesn't have the sweetness of table sugar, but actually affects the freezing point more. So if you substitute 50% of your sugar with dextrose, what you'll actually get is a softer ice cream that doesn't taste as sweet, but does allow you to create a recipe that suits you. Some people's freezers, you know, they're, Minus 25C. And if you make any ice cream, it's just it's just gonna go rock solid in there. So you can start looking at adjusting your sugars, your dextrose. You, you get that with invert sugars as well, where you can adjust the different types of sugar to help with your recipe. Like me, I like my ice creams to be scoopable straight out the freezer, which is why I make them with the sugars and con sugar contents that I do, so that I don't have to sit there for five, 10, 15 minutes and Dars looking at you to be able to get it out the tub I mean gone are the days where I used to take the tub open it up and start eating now I've got to open it up and leave it there and look at it drooling and everyone else around me looking at it it's before you know it, it's a fight like the zombie apocalypse and we're all throwing spoons and ice cream at each other I just want to take it out of the freezer and eat it so chocolate ice cream has a has a habit of going quite hard because people don't account for the solids and the additional fats in the cocoa powder. Those two things alone can make your ice cream go really hard. So you need to start thinking about how to reduce that effect in your chocolate ice cream. What I think we'll do next is probably do a direct comparison of these two. We'll take a recipe, maybe even just this recipe, and we'll make identical ice creams, just substitute the two cocoa powders, direct comparison, and see where we go. I can't keep buying every cocoa powder out there because there are thousands and thousands of different ones. But if you've got a specific cocoa powder in mind that you'd like me to have a look at, let me know. You can find us on Facebook, you can find us on Instagram. Obviously check out the comments down in this video as well. Let me know if there's something you want me to look at. If I can buy it, I'll try and have a look as long as it's not gonna cost the earth. I don't make any money from doing these YouTube videos. So there we go. Another episode in search of the best chocolate ice cream is my favorite flavor. Vanilla just doesn't cut it for me. It's, I find it quite boring, but I know there are lots of people out there that find chocolate ice cream quite boring, so each for our own. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this ramble on chocolate ice cream, and you'll join me next time when we'll do a direct comparison of these two and try and eliminate one of them. Try and go further up the ladder in the hunt for the best chocolate ice cream out there. Anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next week.